to first take on this hump day halfway through the week. We're going to take you over. Max Kellerman, Stephen A. Smith, I'm Molly. What Carroll. up, big boy? How you feeling? How you doing? How we doing? I'm all right. Let's roll. All right, let's get into it. Coming up, they might be the two best receivers in the NFL, but who is the best? Antonio Brown or Odell Beckham? Don't miss that discussion. That's coming up a little later in the show. But we start with the 88 Club. You know what it is. Des Bryant can't wait to get back on the field after having just one catch for eight yards in the season opener. Now, adding to that motivation, of course, is the fact that he gets a shot to redeem himself against Josh Norman on Sunday. In their last meeting in 2015, Norman held Dez to just two catches for 26 yards. Now, meanwhile, after signing a $75 million deal, Norman rarely covered Antonio Brown in week one, and the Steelers' top receiver went off for eight catches, 126 yards, and two TDs, leading critics to question if he is worth the money. So with that, Stephen A., who has more on the line this Sunday, Dez or Norman? I definitely think it's Josh Norman. Um, I think that needs to be said. Let me be very, very clear. Five, uh, five years, $75 million, $50 million in guarantee. I'm very happy Josh Norman got his money. I think he deserved it. This is not a question about his skill. But I can't believe that I'm saying this. It is a question about his heart, not coming from me, because I believe in Josh Norman. But I got a lot of text messages, as I was telling you yesterday when I was in the nation's capital, because I was at the game Monday Night Football, right on the sidelines, hollering at people after the game, getting a lot of text messages from present and former players. And a lot of people were saying, you're Josh Norman. You got to ask for that assignment. It can't be about, okay, I play the left side of the field, and whoever comes over to my side, that's the side I'm playing. Now, in defense of Josh Norman, Josh Norman is quick to say, hey, I play for the Redskins. They signed me to this money. I'm not trying to be a distraction. If, Joe, if Jay Gruden and Joe Barry, the defensive coordinator, if this is what they want me to do, I'm going to do this. You also have to take into account the fact that there are people who say, well, you got to remember the kind of changes that take place, what it ultimately enforces. Because if you have a guy... Uh, like, like I was speaking to Keyshawn Johnson yesterday, mm -hmm. who was about to get his own morning show on ESPN yes, LA exactly. radio, your former house, your, for, your former home, okay? And mine, too, to some degree. But here's the deal. Keyshawn Johnson was pointing this out, and he made the point that if you, if you move Josh Norman, then you've got to move Breland, and you've got to move somebody playing the nickel, and you've got you've to put people in foreign territory that they may not be equipped to, to handle. We understand all of that. But here's the problem. Josh Norman... Is not just an elite corner in this game. He's an elite trash talker. He's somebody that has grown to be very elite at bringing the attention to himself. So nobody wants to hear all of that. And then comes and then come prime time. All of a sudden, you in the dark because the coach got you on the left side of the field, and that's where you're confined to. And offensive coordinators and, and head coaches like Mike Tomlin get to evolve their offense away from you. You can't do that. Somehow, some way, Josh Norman is going to have to step up and be a more active participant in the Redskins. He's going to have to do what D'Angelo Hall did years ago when he said, excuse me, hell with all of that. I'm tired of all these zone schemes and all of this other stuff. I'm the best corner on this team. I'm taking that assignment. I'm not going to sit up here and just stand on one side of the field and be out of the action. I'm not blaming Josh Norman for what transpired Monday. I believe him when he says what he says, and I think everybody should. But the reality is a lot of cats don't. I have had Hall of Fame receivers, Hall of Fame corners, and guys that are playing in the NFL text me in the last 36 hours saying, quote, Josh Norman didn't want that assignment Monday night against Antonio Brown on Monday night football, his first game in a Redskins uniform, nationally televised. I don't believe that. I told him, hell no. I ain't trying to hear that about Josh Norman. But they were emphatic about their statements that Josh Norman wanted no parts of Antonio Brown. You can't do that this week against Des Bryant. When you were acquired by the Redskins, we were all looking forward. What's the first thing you said, Max? Two games against Des Bryant, mm -hmm. two games against Odell Beckham Jr. Could you imagine, based on your statement, if you're sitting here midseason and Josh Norman has had a, like, a grand total of three or four plays against the both of them because they didn't line up? On, a on, on where he was at the left side of the field or the right side of the offensive, or the offensive line, you can't have that. He's the big man on campus, per se. You got to sit up there and demand that you, that you take that assignment. And this Sunday against Des Bryant is where he should begin doing that. Okay. I'm going to address what you just said about Josh Norman in a second. I want sure. to start with Des Bryant. It's more important for Des Bryant. This is a bigger matchup for Des. 
Dez is coming off a down year. Now, he didn't have his quarterback, and he was banged up, but it was a down year for Dez Bryant. Mm -hmm. To the point that when I used to tell everyone how great Odell Beckham Jr. is, how he's qu qualitatively different than the other wideouts, and that his main competition is actually Antonio Brown, not Dez Bryant. Boy, I used to hear it. Dez is the best. That Dez is the best choir, that chorus, has quieted down. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, I hear Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham, Julio, Julio Jones went on the field, and, and, and A.J. Green's getting more love now. It's obviously very early in the season, but he deserves it. And the Dez crowd is much quieter based on last season. Now, you start this season with Dak Prescott, Again, you don't have Tony Romo, but you've been raving about Dak Prescott in the preseason. And Dak Prescott's hooked up with you in the preseason. He's looked good throwing the ball deep. And then you come up against a good giant secondary. I said the other day, best in the NFL, I should have said NFC. But I do think when you look at, the, not the secondary, but the corners on mm -hmm. the Giants. Okay. You know, Janoris Jenkins, Dom Dominic Rogers, Cromartie, and Eli Apple. Find me three better corners on the same team. And they shut him down. Dak Prescott and, and Des Bryant wasn't a thing. One catch for nine yards. One catch for nine yards, eight yards maybe, coming off of a season where it was a down year for you. Mm -hmm. You are an elite receiver, or until very recently, always mentioned. There was no conversation mm -hmm. of the best in the business that did not include Des, include Des Bryant's name. All of a sudden, his name isn't included. You have to ball particularly against another divisional rival when you're down 0-1 on the season. I completely disagree with you. And here's why I disagree with you. Number one, you have a rookie quarterback who's still learning. All right? Last this past weekend was his first game in the NFL. He's not looking to throw outside the numbers. 14 times he targeted Cole Beasley. 12 times he targeted Jason Witten. He was throwing in between the seams, in between the seams. This is what in between the numbers, rather. That's got to get open. I'm just saying. He, but we don't know whether he was open or not because we don't know if that was the game plan on the part of Jason Garrett and Chan Gilly because he was a rookie quarterback. So, in other words, if, you de if you're Des Bryant, you have cover. I would totally agree with you if Tony Romo was the one behind center and you're fresh off a one reception for eight yards performance. There's no question you would be absolutely right, particularly when you take into account Antonio Brown, Julio Jones, Odell Beckham Jr., A.J. Green, for example, all of these other guys. You would have a point. But the fact that you have a rookie quarterback, I think gives you some cover if you're Des Bryant. Here's why Josh Norman has no cover. Not only did Josh Norman get the dollars, not only is he one of the premier corners in the game, easily top five, he believes number one. But he has told us so. And he has talked about looking forward to going up against these okay. guys. I in want the to conference. address that. So if you say that that's what you want and that's what you're looking forward to, and now you've been given the money and the figurative cachet to pull that off, it can't I be want to that. all right. I'm not. He's not on my side of the field. So I've that's made, unacceptable. I've made, I've made the pro Des argument in the sense that he need, has more to prove than uh, than uh, Josh Norman. Sure. I now want to attack your Josh Norman. Sure. Argument. Josh Norman's competitive spirit, I think it's absurd to question that. Because athletically, I don't think he's what some of the elite corners are. That's why he's not really considered a cover guy. He's get, however, competitively, he's so competitive. He got in Odell Beckham Jr.'s head last year. Odell burnt him all over the field. But you know what he did? He was so in his head, Odell dropped the only two passes in his career. One for a touchdown. Because that, and wound up getting himself suspended a game. That's how competitive. He's like a Cortland Finnegan, but, but, but you know, obviously higher paid and, and higher profile. He's that kind of competitor. The fact is, if they're lining up avoiding you, You've done your job. You know how they, they never threw to Deion Sanders' side of the field, and obviously he's no Deion Sanders. But if they're looking to avoid the Antonio Brown matchup with you mm -hmm. in a certain... Now, now, that's one. Hold on. Go, go ahead. On. I'm not Go done. ahead, because you done messed up. Because... Go ahead. Because remember what the whole thing with Norman was before the season. He's going to do a TV show during the season. People are mad. Ownership. Is this the right move? Did they bring in a guy who's going to cause a problem? All this stuff about Josh Norman not demanding things before the game is him being a good soldier. He's there saying, look, I, I have total faith in my coaching staff. I am here to do my job. They do their job. I'm not going to second guess it week one. Right. He's being a good soldier, which is what everyone wanted to see from him in the preseason coming in. And, and, and on top of that, essentially doing his job by well, 
them avoiding their top receiver but you're not, you, see, from on his side of the but field. But once again, you're not. it's not that you're wrong. It's that you're incomplete. You're making valid points about Josh Norman in terms of his competitive fervor. Nobody should ever question that about Josh Norman. I think it's absolutely idiotic for anybody to think that he's scared of somebody or he's non-competitive and he's scared to go at somebody. I don't think that's the case at all. I completely believe him when he's talking about things schematically and how the Redskins decided to do what they did. Where you messed up was when you brought up prime time. Let's understand something about prime time. If Max was number one, prime time's on you. And by the way, if then all of a sudden Molly's catching for 200 yards, prime time gonna switch on her. It don't matter. But he, you're no, comparing no, no, him it, to the greatest no, no, who no, no, ever no, no. did I'm not, it. I'm not Sanders no, the best you're, ever. You're not hearing my point. I'm not comparing. I'm simply saying you should have never brought him up. That was your <laughs> mistake. <laughs> so you were the one that compared. I'm telling you what you, you're absolutely right with what you okay, just said, but you were wrong one. to bring here's him up to one. begin with. Hold on. I'm saying to you, if you're Josh Norman and you're getting this kind of money, understand what people are saying when they're throwing you under the bus. Are you worried about My what question. people are saying or are you worried about the results on the field? Yeah, look, man. Of course we're worried about what people are saying. We're the ones talking. Don't we want people to be worried about what we're saying? Yeah, yeah, of no, course you do. But, no, but no, if you're Josh that. Norman, I mean, the, are you the, worried about what people are saying well, or are you worried about yes, how you're playing? Because you know why you're worried about what people are saying? Because you talking and people listening to you is what got you your money. Right. So in other words, and so now you you're can, doing what the coaches the, want you to no, do. No, no, no. You're doing what the coaches want you to do, but it was in the midst of Antonio Brown schooling y'all. Now, if there was nobody, if nine different receivers were being effective and Big Ben Roethlisberger was spreading the ball all over the place, you'd have a point. Marcus Wheaton was out. Heath Miller just retired. Ladarius Green was out. Martavis Bryant couldn't stay off the weed. So he's out for the damn year. Le'Veon Bell, who's not only a runner but a pass catcher, out of the backfield, was out. Everybody and their grandmother knew Antonio Brown's going to get the ball. And you have Breland on him? They like Breland it, in the preseason. It, 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 really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Listen, listen. I they like Breland. I think he's a solid quarter. I'm not saying, yes. And solid. by the way, let, and by the way, listen, only because of Antonio to, Brown's listen, greatness listen the did, did Breland not have coming a out of your mouth. Antonio the, Brown caught a touchdown so, that he took out of Breland's hands because Antonio Brown is on another planet. Max, not because Breland can't Max cover. Kellerman, you just brought up that Breland is solid. Yeah. But you're the Redskins. You went out and paid $75 million, $50 million in guarantee. That wasn't for solid. That was for somebody you labeled great. And you would have him on the opposite side, yes, away from the best receiver in football? He, Does that make sense to you? He, when Does that got, make sense to you? Answer got, that question. No, no, from the coaching staff's point right. of view? No, I would have okay. put well, Josh well, Norman. That's we say but, but, but that's not, Josh Norman's not the coach. I understand that. But what I'm saying to you is that if you've got guys who played the position, who were elite at the position, who are saying that Josh Norman should have asked for the assignment because you got a teammate in D'Angelo Hall who is no longer a cornerback because he understands Father Tom and sort of creeped up on him a little bit. So he switched to the free safety position. Still good. What did he do? D'Angelo Hall in the past would sit there and say, I'm the best. Get, I'm not so, listening to y'all. So Give me the assignment. That's what I'm saying. Because Hall of Famer receiver, whoever's calling it, received. It wasn't just one. It was several. Perceived that he didn't make enough noise. He didn't show that he was champing at the bit and ready to go at Antonio no, Brown. What he was saying Somehow is, that's a deficiency. How about the fact that he is being a good soldier and being used schematically, whether he agrees with it or not, the way the coach well, he does, wants. He deserves to be applauded for his professionalism. Congratulations. Yeah. But this was while the best receiver in football was flat out waxing your team mm -hmm. and your teammates. So when you look at it so from blame the coach, no, no, what you no, blaming him for? Well, no, I'm not blaming him. I said the question for the subject matter, Max, wasn't is, is he to blame for the Redskins on Monday night? The question was, who has a lot at stake uh -huh. this Sunday because okay. Des Bryant is coming into the so house. One. And now for the second consecutive week, you can't sit on the left side and say, well, that's not my responsibility. You might have to step up and say, look, damn it, Breland, I love you, but you ain't handling business. Let's switch. Yeah. You might have to do so, that. So you just one, might. going into the season, we knew that Norman is not a classic cover corner. Everyone who's come on the show is By the way, the same Norman thing. denies that. Right. Norm, fine. Whatever. He believes. But because he has pride. But, but he believes. You just said his competitive drive is But he, be he believes oh. he's a cover guy, too. Okay, fine. I'm he may also that. believe in doing what the coaches say because he's trying to be a good soldier. So sometimes he has to believe something, sometimes not. Let, let him believe what he believes. But he's not a classic cover corner, according to everyone who watches him, uh, uh, in the way that some of the other guys, like Revis, was at his best or someone like that. But he's a very, very good player. And coming into the season, did we expect him to always 
draw the top assignment and act as though he is a cover corner? Or is he going to be used schematically a little different, more like he was used to great success, you know, before he ever got to uh, here's my response. Here's my direct answer to that. When you have what is perceived to be an elite corner on your squad, any offense, opposing offense coming into a stadium should know that we have to deal with this guy because this guy is going to be responsible for trying to negate our number one offensive weapon. That's what it's, it's supposed it's, to be. Tim Hasselbeck was on the show yesterday addressing this. If you're Josh Norman and you are going to abide by what the coaches want, not second guess, not cause a problem after week one in a, in, on a, on a, in a franchise where sometimes these kind of problems come up. You, he, well, he has a TV show. He says, no, I'm not a distraction. I'm a team player. You, what is it exactly you want him to do? You want him to do more than his job? I am because, not... because the proof in the pudding, as Tim Hasselbeck said, is they were avoiding his side of the field. They were lining Antonio Brown up on the opposite side of the field. As a player, that's all you can be responsible and I'm for. Saying to your you, assignment. And I'm saying to you, that's fine for Monday night. I understand. But with Des Bryant and the Dallas Cowboys coming in, with you on the record quoted as saying you're looking forward to going against Des Bryant and Odell Beckham Jr., let me ask you a question. If Josh Norman does the same thing and the Giants line Odell Beckham Jr. on the opposite side of the field with their history, is Max Kellerman going to sit here and look me in the face and go like this? I don't have a problem with Josh Norman being on the opposite side of the field as Odell Beckham Jr. No, I will say this. The coaching staff knows what it's doing because Odell burnt him all over the field last year. Mm -hmm. And you, first of all, there's almost no one who can cover one-on-one -on -one any of these top receivers. I'm not now. asking you. Listen, Secondly, I'm not asking you that. The match don't try up. to change it. You think you're being, you're being slick. That's not what I asked you. I know Odell Beckham Jr. pretty much got the best of him. I know how electrifying Odell Beckham Jr. is. That is not my question, Max Kellerman. What I asked you is specific, and I do believe that I speak fluent English. I asked you a direct question. Go ahead. You, if you saw Josh Norman yes. lined up on the opposite side of the field than Odell Beckham Jr. with their history, would you or would you not have a problem with it? I would be disappointed as a fan. But as, a, but as someone watching a football game, and, it can have if, legitimate reasons if, for if, that. If, if, and also, Greenland is... If you like, saw, you're acting if like you saw, Josh, if you saw, if you, No, I'm not. I'm saying Josh Norman is the man. If Josh Norman seemed content right? on being on the left side and was making no noise whatsoever, just as peace and tranquil as you could possibly be, not minding at all if Odell Beckham Jr. wasn't even in the vicinity, you trying to tell me that would be acceptable to you? Yes. You, that's a lie. Yes. You're lying. You oh, I you wish can. I had a cup of water. I'd throw it on you. you that's can. a lie. You can. You're lying. You can it's... sign a baseball player, and the idea is he's going to hit in the middle of the lineup, and the manager can decide, no, I want to lead him off. That, that's what how he used you know it. But it didn't person. work this I'm, last I'm, week. I appreciate that baseball it. analogy. Last point. I want to go there. Barry Bonds mm -hmm. rolls up to the play. I'm Roger Clements. I'm Randy Johnson. You know, I'm any of these dudes. Studs. You understand what I'm saying to you? I'm Kershaw. I'm Walk Bumgarner. Em. Walk right, wait, four pitches. Tell, tell me, tell me, Walk excuse em. me. Four pitches. I'm, 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 I'm going to sit up there and let a manager. I'm a stud now. I'm a Cy Young Award winner. I'm a right. future Hall of Famer. I'm elite. We talk, I brought up elite pitches in, NF, in MLB history. I'm going to sit up there. And, and, and walk them intentionally. Yep. The, you know what? Let me they did. The, the, no, they did that. Yes, they did. That's a lie. Hold on. That's a lie. Even no, a, not the elite the pitchers. Year, not the elite pitchers. That's a me. lie. The year that Barry Bonds had a 600 on base percentage. That's right. Which is unheard of when he looked no, totally no, 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 just no, no, out no, no, of no, his no, mind. Don't go and one of your son, the, the, well, uh, uh, philosophical uh, soliloquy. Year, who walked them? That who year, I would have to go back and look. That's right, because you ain't going to find it. But I can tell you. The elite pitchers? Dave Sabino will look this up right now. The elite pitchers, Max? You're going to Lie on national television. Going into the game used to be from some managers, no pitches to Barry Bonds. David Sabino, obviously, he's going to look it up right now. That's an elite pitcher. Yes. I, I said elite. Yes. I didn't say average. Yes. I said elite. Right. I'm trying to tell you a manager. If I were the manager. Me, no, 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 that's not what I asked. No, 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 you don't get to change the narrative. I, I to said to things. you, I said to you, the elite. 
picked yes. pitches. In the game of baseball, yes. when you got that kind of challenge, a manager wouldn't even think to go up to them to tell Sabino them to find, walk them. Sabino it, will it's go a lie. A, Sabino, it's a lie. Sabino I got to see some of There's not a ton of them. Okay. You, you, okay. Hey, listen, you... Yeah. You, the encyclopedic mind yes. that you have, yes. you would have known it off you the top. Why? As much as you, you love baseball, you that's why I know you're you know lying. Because I, I know you no, would you know. know. why I can't what? off the top of my head? What? Because it was so routine for managers to walk Bonds every time he came to the plate. Not the elite. Year. Not you, the elite. Everybody. Not the elite. He drove over no, 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 no. Forget the facts. Not the elite. We're going to look it Not up. the elite. I got to see it to believe it. I we'll promise you. We'll come back to it. Oh, please. Boy, where's my boy Jeff Brown when I need him? Where's my man Jeff Brown when I need him? I know Jeff would know this off the top. An elite pitcher walked Barry Bonds. That's a lie. No. They would never die. They would, yes. They'd look at a manager yes, like, you, are you smoking they something? Could look at so back really to walk. our conversation, the Go question ahead. remains, Go ahead. will Norman cover Dez? That remains He's to be seen. He's got to. At times, he has to cover Des Bryant, although he may not at need to the way Des right. At times. Right. <laughs> the way Des Bryant. Thanks for the guys talk about one of <laughs> the top no receivers in the NFL. <laughs> Stephen A is getting you know, annoyed. I know the annoyed voice. But later in the like show, the guys yeah. will discuss maybe the two best receivers in football. Who would you rather have on your team, Antonio Brown or Odell Beckham, right now? Go on the First Take Twitter page and 